Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the Object 261, the Tier 10 Soviet SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Ruinburg and it's under the command of Petro 123 of Gallia. Well, it's armed with an 18 centimeter main howitzer capable of doing 800 alpha, 45 millimeters of pen with a 9.5 meters burst radius. Standard reload of this RT is 30.68 seconds. Petro's managed to get down to 24.66. Right, he's ready to go. Well, he spotted an enemy tank over in this corner, but he lost sight of it, uh, but he fired blind in there. Now, one of the, the bad things about the Object 261 is you don't get a whole lot of ammunition. Unfortunately, you get a rather small amount, comparatively. It's only 20 rounds. It's really not enough for an RT. And in fact, actually, I find on the Ruinberg map, you're actually much better off if you go to the far southeast corner of the map if you're on the south spawn. He's got a Fosh B lining up ahead of his path. Rounds out. Looks good. Lands just in front of him. It was a very long range shot right to the other end of the map. And he's changing position to avoid counter battery. We just saw a hash bomb there. And in fact, just on the other corner, there's an M60. So that would make a very good target. But he's pulled back because he got uh, hit there. Okay, which one's he going to go for? Well, the gorilla, but he's not. He's virtually fully blown. But if he can get a shot in, rounds out. Oh, he got him. He actually got a hit. A direct hit on the Gorilla 15, which is bound to do a lot of damage because that tank destroyer does not have armor. So really, he might have actually damaged him severely with that shot. That might be a very, very good shot. We'll have to wait and see how many hit points the Gorilla 15 actually has, but I don't think it's many. Well, there's that uh, M60. He's very reluctant to come up into that corner. But he's not alone. I think the hash bomb's coming up as well. There's the hash bomb. And he gets a direct hit on him. It was only 374 hit points of damage, but I think he actually hit the hull rather than the turret, so that's why he didn't get the pen. Okay, things are not going too well in the town, but he's just changing position again to avoid counter battery and also to get a better angle on these two the M60 and the hash bomb. Fires the round in blind, and he gets a direct hit. I guess that hash bomb was still there. So Petro, although he's not showing actually much damage, he actually does have two blind hits, big hits as well, the Gorilla 15 and then the hash bomb. So he could actually have a lot more damage than is actually being shown at the moment. And the M60 popped up this time, and he takes a direct hit as well. 297 right in the front of the face he got rid of his stun very quickly though one of the reasons why i like this uh, particular um going out to the southeast corner is you can actually shoot onto that those steps fairly easily without uh, any hindrance at all there's no blockage. If they go and try and hide around the corner, you can see that one of them's moving about because there is some destruction going on on that corner. Meanwhile, EBR's turned up in the field. We're trying to nail him, but he's moving about fairly rapidly as you'd expect for an EBR. And he stopped. Bad move for an EBR. Takes a direct hit and penetration. High roll for 829. Yeah, never stay still if you're an EBR because you are very vulnerable. Not unless you're very well hidden. You can also see the enemy's got uh, two tanks up on the uh, east side of the village. Right into the corner. There's that EBR again. Which 
trying to chase it. Firing ahead of its path. It's getting a lot of reticule bloom. That's because the arc of this howitzer is only five degrees either side of the center line. And so you get big reticule bloom every time you move the howitzer. And uh, consequently, it's sometimes better to pick a target that's not moving about so rapidly. But he fires the round in the M60, but it hits the building. Still got 12 rounds of ammunition, though, and he's trying to improve his angle on that M60. Okay, he's disappeared from sight because our teammates can't see him at the moment. But, oh, we've got some targets we can hip up here. And it's a Leopard 1. And there's a tank destroyer behind him as well, apparently. But it's a very difficult angle. Rounds out the Leopard. Hits the building instead. And there's the Gorilla 15. That's the same Gorilla 15 that was in the center of town. But he's much reduced on hit points now. And in fact, actually, he just got wiped out by our Leopard 1. But unfortunately, we lost the Leopard 1 to the Heshbon. Okay, the enemy's on the move. It's the uh, EVR, and the EVR goes down to our batch at 25 ton. Yes, yeah, never mess with an autoloader. Unfortunately, the Fosh B did mess with the autoloader. He just took out our EVR, um, our batch at. So now we've got a Fosh in the town there. We're in that corner. That's the guy who just killed our batch at. Okay, we've got no angle on the Fosh B. And there's a Contra Caro there as well. Okay, Heshbon. Should be able to get a hit here. Rounds out. Fires it. Oh, he did looked away. And I can't rectify that by doing a rewind and watching again. Because, of course, that denies us the sight of the kill. And Petro, you have been warned. Don't do that. If you do that, I will have to exclude your videos I'm doing it because you're not showing us the kill rounds out well tried a blind didn't get anything from it well we did just briefly see the T110 E5 just go down to the Leopard 1 just in the town center and up on this side of the map we know there is a Leopard up here We're one down on the enemy at the moment, but we do have a shot on a Yeageru, but he's virtually fully held, so rounds out, direct hit on his side, 316, you can see where it actually hit, just on the edge of the roof. Our Yeageru is still in the town centre, or um, much further in. Okay, can we get a shot in this Centurion action? 10. Rounds out. Bit late, but it did splash in for 89. And the lip of one on the enemy team just went down. So that's good news. The bad news is that Jaeger is headed towards us and we have been spotted. There is an enemy RT. It's a T92 HMC. And going into this corner makes it very difficult for him to get a shot at our Object 261. Can we get a shot in this Centurion? We should be able to. We're loaded. Rounds out. Oh, it overshot and he's really annoyed with himself over that one. And we lost another tank. So now it's three versus four. And the Jaeger is fairly nearby. And yes, our other Jaeger is trying to defend us. And he's taking fire. Now that Jaeger, the enemy one, is fairly low on hit points. Now, we could actually get a kill if we can get a direct hit, but it's a very difficult shot. He's going to try. Nope, didn't get it. And again, we got spotted. So it's three versus three now. Both teams have got Jaegerus. The enemy team's got a Fosh, whereas our team's got a Gorilla 15. Oh, he just fired. He just fired. Now, can we take this guy out? 
He can see us, we can see him, but he's in the reload. Well, he did fire and got 128. Unfortunately, a Fosh B is very, very close by. A Yeru wipes him out with one round. But it means the enemy Yeru is going to be firing next. And once he has fired, we've got three rounds left. So we'll get another three. We should be able to wipe out the Yeru. Okay, he just killed our Yeru. But now we should be able to wipe him out with one shot. And he does! So two kills now for Petro. And now this one-on-one -on -one with both parties in the game. The gorilla got wiped out, but he took out the Fosh. Well, rather, the Fosh got taken out by the Yeager. But now it's Artie versus Artie. And he's positioned himself there to avoid the T92 HMC getting a quick shot at him. And the good thing is that the Object T61 reloads much quicker than the T92. They've both got the Alpha to take each other out with just one shot. The question is, can who gets the more accurate shot when they spot each other? The idea is being to, uh, if the T92 fires prematurely and too widely, wildly rather, then he could lose the game when uh, Petro123 just drives up and shoots him inside and takes him out with one round. In fact, he wouldn't need to get close. He just needs to be, shoot, be able to shoot him. Um, and he's found his enemy. Okay, now, he's auto-aiming onto target. He's not actually doing it. Um... Oh, he took out the enemy T-92, but the T-92 hit Petro, but only tracked him, and he's still alive and won the game. The end result of that battle was a proper duel between two players. I don't think the T-92 went to uh, aiming mode. I think he just uh, manually aimed just like Petro did. And they dueled at each other and they both fired simultaneously. And the good news is Petro got the kill shot and the T-92 only splashed Petro123, which tracked him, took away most of his hit points. But he was still alive at the end of the game. Wow, that could have been a draw so easily. But it turned out to be a victory for Petro. He got a first class tanker out of that game. As well as a bruise medal for getting at least 5 critical hits. In fact, he got 12. He got a gauze medal for doing more damage. Exceeding 8 times the hit points of his own vehicle. And on top of that, he got a confederate as well. For hitting more of the enemy than anyone else. At least 6 tanks taken out by his own teammates as well. His win eight from that one, 7,071, which is super unicum and a lot more. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he actually managed to get the highest damage in the game. 4,220 hit points went to Petro123. And the second highest damage in the game went to the M60 on the enemy team with 3,320. And in third place, we have the Leopard 1 on our own team with a Confederate and 2,985. So he was doing equally good damage as Petro was. When it came to kills, it's actually shared because Petro did three kills. So did the Gorilla 15. So did the Leopard 1 on his team. And only one player on the enemy team managed to get three kills. And that was the Centurion Action 10. And when it came to base XP... He's got that one too. So he's got the top in all three columns in that game. 910 went to uh, Petro123. 839 went to the TVP T5051. And the EBR105 got 830. So very well done. Let's have a look at detail. He fired 19 rounds. So he only had one round spare at the end, but he didn't need to use it. He got the last kill with the second to last shell. Pity it wasn't the last shell because that would have been a Phaedon's as well. But he did get 10 direct hits on the enemy, two penetrating shots. Now, I'm pretty certain one of those penetrations was on the T-92. Yes, one hit. He did get a direct hit on the target and wiped him out with one round. I think he probably, uh, oh, he didn't penetrate the uh, Hesh Barn. He actually picked up 1,019 hit points of damage to him. But uh, was it the EBR? Yes, it was the EBR. He got a low roll penetrating shot. Uh, was it, No, it was a high roll penetrating shot on the EBR 105 when he stopped for a moment and, of course, made himself vulnerable. So going back to the details, we can see he also got 15 splashes in the game, 4,220 hit points, of which 3,446 were at more than 300 meters. So there were some close range shots. And in fact, I think that shot 
on the T92 was within 300 meters. He did receive one hit and also two hits by way of splash. One of those was definitely from the T92. One enemy vehicle was spotted. That's the T92. Nine enemy vehicles were damaged. Three were killed. And he got 13 stuns in the game, but absolutely no stun assist. If he got a tiny bit of stun assist, that might have given him an ace tanker. On a free-to-play account, he actually made a loss on that game, would you believe it? 30,613 credits. But I think most of that's down to consumables and the fact that he did have to repair his vehicle at the end because he did get hit by that uh, T92. And he also picked up seven bonds for it being tier 10 and 1,820 experience points as well. But I suppose the duel was the best bit in that one way. It's actually, he was waiting his turn to shoot the Jaeger each time that that happened. And that was good. But the duel on the T92, they had precious little time to go to aim. They could have gone to aim, but he didn't do it. He actually did it manually and got the kill that way. Uh, that takes a lot of skill and a very steady hand. As you can notice, he was moving about a little bit, trying to adjust his aim right at the last moment. But he got the accurate shot and the T92 failed. And Petro took the victory. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.